Hi, um, let's start the class. Okay, um, we'll talk about chapter nine. It's about the organizational plan, how you need to set up your business. Uh, you have to plan it ahead of how to set up your business. So basically, um, we are in uh, this subject. What we will do is, first of all, we need to develop a, so developing the management team. And potentially investors usually, you know, as you saw probably in the video, uh, potential investors uh, most uh, uh, are interested in the management team, its ability to uh, do their, uh, apologize just a second. Um, potential investors are interested in the management team. They're not interested in individuals. So if you want to walk to any potential investors, you probably need to, you know, have a team. It shows its ability to, and their commitment to the new venture. Investors usually look for the teams that operate the business full time. Investors perceive an entrepreneur taking a large salary, on the other hand, as a lack of commitment to the business. So you wanna make sure that when you are coming to doing an entrepreneurship, you don't cut a big salary for yourself because that shows that, you know, uh, you're not, uh, you know, you are not willing to take the risk. The entrepreneur should consider the role of the board in the supporting management of a venture. We'll talk about the boards later on. But here where we're gonna talk, we talk about different legal form of business. And the reason we do that, because in the beginning, you need to know exactly what kind of a business you're establishing and what it's taking in you. And when you suppose, you know, um, change your business if it's necessary. So there is a three basic forms. There is a proprietorship, which is you are the sole owner, and you own it, there is the part partnership, which is, you know, a variation of, uh, you know, liabilities. And there is the corporations, which is one additional form of the, is, which is called LLC, which is limited liability companies. So in the beginning, when you establish a business, if you don't have a company, you need to think about which one you want to do, because each one has a pro and cons. Now, the the entrepreneur should evaluate the pros and cons of the legal forms prior to submitting of a business plan. That's not supposed to be. Also looking at the tax level, what kind of taxes, this information might be helping you. So the entrepreneur should also determine the priority of several factors, which is including the taxes factor. Now, the there is an ownership and owner liabilities. In the proprietorship, the owner has a full responsibility. The basic start of a company, probably most of the people start with their establishing their company, which is a proprietorship and you are fully own, own it. In a partnership, the owner may be general partner or limited partner. The partnership is a legal entity in a limited liability partnership. They are two different things because uh, prior, uh, we will talk about it probably later on about what is the liability, how it's affecting the liability in case of proprietorship or in case of partnership. The third type, which is we talked about is the corporation, which is the ownership uh, hangs uh, on shares of stocks owned. Now in the proprietorship and a general partner are liable for all aspects of the business. So if the big business goes bankruptcy or lose, uh, they, your personal 
goods like a car or a housing or other income, it's liable. So the bank might have a hand on it. On the other hand, and the corporation owners is liable only for their investment. So if you're investing in a corporation, Iran bank and the corporation goes bad, uh, that money goes away, they will take it over. They would not go to your, your personal things is uh, protected. Now, so the creditor may seize a personal asset in, of the proprietorship and in the general partner. So that's what you call limited partners are liable only to their contributions. So how much they're contributing here, they will take away that part. But in LLP is a form of LLC, both protected personal, so the, all they do take over the, the person, they don't touch the personal things. Now, startup costs and continuity of the business. This is something that you need also to take into consideration when you establish your business uh, form or legal, legal entity. Uh, for proprietorship, the startup cost is a minimum. Probably you need to pay $60 as a startup and you can do it online in two hours and a few days later you have on your own company. Especially if, you're, uh, if it doesn't have to go through process of naming. Um, in a partnership agreement requires some kind of a legal advice and fees that you need to pay to the accountant or the lawyer to establish that. Uh, uh, so the corporation, on the other hand, is created only by status. In a way, corporation gets, uh, you know, established, and then you, know, to, you know, legally by status is giving that. So it has to be registered and meet the statutory requirement. There's certain requirement that more the accountant, chartered accountant, and the law, uh, specialized lawyer are involve uh, understand how to process that. There is a filing fees in it, there is a taxes in it and a legal. I think it's roughly would cost you around to have a partnership. Maybe it's gonna cost you around uh, from 1,000 to 1,500, uh, but the corporation probably over 10, 15,000, I don't know. Really, but it depends on where you're doing this corporation. In case of proprietorship, the death of the sole proprietorship terminate the business. In the death of a general partner, terminate the partnership only. So whatever there is, is has to be a buyout to, or takeover of the share may be allowed. The, here where you find lots of insurance companies trying to sell you uh, some kind of insurance, what if the, your partner dies and you don't have money for it? So the insurance company will pay for you to buy these, uh, these uh, the buyout. A death of a limited partner has no effect on, on the continuity of part, uh, continuity of say, you know, he has 10% or minimum, but if he has the majority that might affect it. Affect it. The corporation, has the most continuity because corporation is a standalone and doesn't have an owner. The owners are the ones who own the shares and the corporation usually stands alone. So um, the, when we talk about transferabilities and capital requirement, the sole proprietorship may sell or transfer an asset easily because he's the owner, he can do that. And in the limited partners, in a general partnership can sell anytime, but assuming that the general partner have to give the first refusal, then may sell it. So the, the other partner says, if I'm a partner with somebody, the first option is I have to sell my, my part of it, my share to the, my partner. And if he refused, then I, I can sell it somewhere else. In the shareholder or in the corporation may sell anytime because you own shares, you don't own the company. So you can share, sell the shares anytime or buy the shares. Shareholders agreement may limit some sales, but that's according to the agreement. 
the corporation only allowed to transfer to in, an individual. So shares in Canada, you cannot sell to corporation. I believe you can sell it to individual. Anyway. Proprietorship must take out a loan or add a personal capital. So if you are owner of the company, there is two ways of doing it. It's to do a business uh, to get a loan from a bank by presenting your business plan to them or add a capital from personal, for example, selling your house or selling your car or you know, getting borrow from the family. So borrowing may require an issuance of equities. So you need to put your equities online uh, to get the, the, you know, the loan. Partnership agreement uh, change. If the partnership get a loan, if the partnership added fund, it is two different things. So if the partnership um, say add fund, he will have a more percentage in that company. But if the partnership get a loan from outside, then the partnership, the whole partnership will be owning money to the outside. So they will keep the same share. But if one of the partner puts his funds more on it, so he probably will have more share in this in this can. In the new capital for a corporation, money can be raised by you know selling stocks and bonds or borrowing money from, you know. Uh, in the name of their corporations. So the management control and the distribution profit, how this thing is divided different in the different three different forms of business. And you probably need to know that because you need to have some kind of a level of management, uh, to, you have to kind of a level of control over them. So uh, you need to, in the beginning, define what kind of a business you need to go for. But in the sole proprietorship has the most control over the decision because he's the only person. He can sell, buy, borrow, you know what I mean? But in the partnership, the majority is rule. So if you have, you need to partner somebody because he's putting fund and you're doing the business, and you want to have the control, you probably can ask for 151% and you give them 49%. So you have the majority shares there. So the limited partner have no control over business decisions. So if somebody has less than 49%, 49 and less, he has no control over the decision. Now the management, now it gets more, a little bit more complicated. What if we have a three partners There's still who, when the voting happening, who gets the majority is the ones who runs it. So if there is one has 50, another 25 and 25, 50 and 25, 75, both say yes, and then 25 said no. So because of 75, they run this. So according to the majorities. Now there is some kind of a management control. You need to be very careful when you establish your business as an entrepreneur. Management control daily business in the corporation, that's a different thing. In a business in a corporation, you have the long-term decision may require the stockholders and share, uh, shareholders to vote. Stockholders affect the operation through, you know, a board of directors. The board director represent the you know, majority of shareholders and they, they make the decision. Now, proprietors, receive all the profit, but in the same time, they receive all the loss. So if you lose in the business, they might have a hand on your housing, on your car, on your salary, something like that. But in the partnership agreement, outline the distribution of profit or a loss. So if you put 50, you cover 50% of loss or 40% of loss or 30. There's also in case of loss, you have some kind of agreement. And in the corporation, distribution profit through the stockholders. There's two kind of dividends, stockholders, there is, you know, shared dividends. And there's more details that you might probably get it in a more advanced course. Now, 
in a both proprietorship and partnership, the ability to raise uh, capital, the, the success of the business, the capability of the entrepreneur. And this is where you have uh, two things. If you have a running business and succeed, it's easy to, for you to collect the more uh, capital. But if you're good and you establish your business plan accordingly and you do your, all your activity as an entrepreneur, that's another way of collecting money. When you have the both things, that a perfect thing. So due to the personal liability advantage, the corporation is, you know, the most attractive form for the business of raising capital. It's easy because you're selling shares. Now you're still gonna know people would not pay any price for your shares. It depends how business, how's your business is doing. Now, so selling share of stocks, bonds, and or complying debits are all, all ways to raise the capital with a limited liability. And it's easier, they can get it from the banks also. Now, the issues here, when we are talking LLC, we will ignore this part because this is more about the American LLC versus S corporation. In the limited liability uh, company, the characteristics that uh, is kind of the partnership corporation is hybrid. It's like a, they're not active. The corporation have a shareholders, and the partnership have partners. The LLC has members. The shareholders, they uh, the manager might not be holding any share. The CEO might not be holding holding some share or majority of share or not share at all. So no share are issues each member owns an interest in the business liability does not extend beyond your share in that company your capital contribution members may transfer their interest only with the anonymous written consent um, you know in the contract visually they tell you whether you can transfer your share the standard terms of LLC is 30 years usually, yeah, the life longer and then after 30 years they have to renew it. But the dissolution is likely when one member is dies, uh, the business goes bankrupt, or all members choose to dissolve the business. Laws governing of LLC is usually is different from states to states, but it's very similar in, in Canada, but there is very limited difference between them from a provincial to another provincial. Now, when you come and design the organization, the design of the organization will be simple as entrepreneur may perform all the function because you will be one person or two people, you will do everything, but then you have to separate these things. You want to make sure you cover some functionalities. Somebody is also a part and comes in some functionality. Like for example, you can take care of the sales and marketing. He can tell, take care of operation, something like that. So you need to divide these uh, functions later on. A common problem we see and in a significant reason for failure when the entrepreneur is unwilling to give up uh, responsibility or, or include others. So we had a class, it's called Mini MBA. The first question uh, was asking us how many people, um, it was in UK, uh, we did that. Uh, how many, uh, he said, well, all of you guys, ma managers, how many of you guys think that your business would not be running if it's not there? Majority raised their hand. So he said, what about the people on the cemetery? They were, some of them are managers who died, but their business is running. So you need to, you know, try to give up some responsibilities and include others with it. If so, the entrepreneur may, if it doesn't, the entrepreneur may have difficulty to transition from a startup to a growing business that maintain a success over time. You know, when you're an entrepreneur and you start up a business, 
you need more entrepreneurship. But as the business is growing, you need to adjust and have more people who do, can do the bureaucratic thing, comes and take over. Then you need people who can make the business grow. It's the culture change. The, is like a, a human being when he's a child is different than when he's an adult, when it's growing old. You know, these are things is also with the business like this. As the work increase, the organization structures definitely will expand. You need to spend good time on effective interviewing and hiring must be in a place. All design and decision involve personal reflect the formal structures. An organization also has informal structure. There is a formal structure. You need somebody to be an accountant, somebody who is operations, somebody is sales, somebody is marketing. But there is an informal structure also. The organization culture, which is evolved over time and need to impress the entrepreneur thing. Things is, you know, uh, how the culture is getting developed. You need as an entrepreneur to monitor it. The organization must identify the major activity required to operate effectively. So that's not an issue that you need to look at it, how to build your, also the culture part. So the members' expectations in design. When you bring people in a team, you either have some expectation you need to go to look at them and see whether you are covering them because if they're not meeting their expectation, they might leave you and they become your competition, by the way. <clears throat> Sorry. The design of the organization is a formal and explicit indication of what is expected from each member. So there is two ways. What I'm expecting from the organization and what the organization expects from me. And there is a five areas that you need to look at it. First, you need to look at the organizational structure. How the organizational chart, and you can download lots of chart, how they, who is supposed to report to what, at what level, what if any, in case of emergency, who is in charge, something like that. Then you need to do some planning, measurement, evaluation schemes, the goal and the objective uh, of the venture. There should be a consideration, a good consideration of reward. If there is a bonus, there is a promotion and a praise. Um, selection criteria, you have to spend so much time on a guideline for hiring these people. So not only is you hiring the qualified people, there is a heart behind these qualified people somebody is having that heart or not. You need to look deeper to hire people who can be your soulmate in this world, willing to take things. But if he was willing to take things further, he also looking at the bonus for rewards and promotion center. We need to look at that also. Training, whether you're gonna do training on the job or off the job, formal education or learning skills. So you need to bring in people, how are you gonna train them? How you get them ready to do it? To work for you. The organization design may be, you can start it very simple and move it to complex. You don't have to make it very complex in the beginning. Now, once the things is growing, there is a change in roles in the evolving organization. Now, as the organization evolves and grows and, you know, develop, the entrepreneur decision roles becomes more critical for an effective organization. It means that the primary concern is to adopt the change and seek new ideas. Because you're an entrepreneur, you, are the, you need to adjust some stuff or seek new ideas. A new, when a new idea is found, the entrepreneur must initiate the development or delegate the responsibility somebody you or somebody as a business development manager will be in charge of this stuff. There will be a need to respond to a pressure by putting out fires. If there is a pressures on you, how you, as an entrepreneur, how are you gonna balance that? The entrepreneur will become an allocators of resources. After a while, when the companies are growing, you allocate resources, you're delegating budget, you're delegating things and responsibilities. You become like a, the coach who's running the whole show 
without him running the show. He's managing the whole show. The entrepreneur become a negotiator as the only person with the appropriate authority. So you will be in the position of negotiators also. Once your business start running as an entrepreneur, you will have lots of fun. Now, when you try to build a team, uh, building the management team and the culture, you want to make sure the entrepreneur need the right mix of people to assume that the responsibility outlined in the organization structure. We said that you need to divide the task and see who can fit best on it. Now the, the team must be able to accomplish a three function, main function. Execute the business plan, which is be able to deliver your business plan or help you to deliver this. Identify the fundamental change in the business as they occur. So once things is happening, you need to have 360 degree look to see if there is changes happening. So how are you gonna adjust to it? So you need to identify it and then adjust the business, the plan based on change that will maintain the profitability. So first the entrepreneur must define the skills and the ability needed to meet the goal of the business plan. As we said, in the, when you build your business plan, sometimes you might need an accountant to help you, a chartered accountant and a lawyer. You need to see the gaps, somebody or marketing or marketing help you. There is a gap when you're building the business plan. Here's when you're implementing the business plan, you also there is a gap. So you need to consider the personality and the characteristic of each individual that you're hiring. The culture will be a unique to each business. So you need to see, to build your own best fit culture. The entrepreneur must delegate to create, you know, you need to delegate jobs so people will feel more responsible and then be feeling that's their business so they can run it in a best way. Now, there is, comes the time to, uh, recruit an effective team. And this is probably the next step after, you know, you get your loan from the bank or whatever, and you need people to work with you. Before that, you might have one person who probably will be partnered with you on this entrepreneur one or four or five. The bigger the team, the better. A desired culture must match the business strategy. So you should have a culture that built in, build your, your, you know, build your idea, write down your idea and says, we want to be number one. We want to be a uh, best service provider. You put a, 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 a goal and then you build your culture according to that goal. And it's all should match your business strategy. The workplace must motivate and reward good work. There must be flexible to try different things and spend extra time, especially on hiring process, because I said people are more than their skills, characteristics, their heart is more important. Understanding the significance of a leadership in the organization. Leadership should establish core values and provide tools so employees can effectively complete their jobs at as a rule. So you need to provide all the tools so they can really effectively uh, complete their job. Finding an effective team and creating a positive culture is as critical as having an innovative marketable product. And this is where most of company falls, fails in that they're not creating a positive culture. Now, later on when you establish a company and you go to the bank and you, they ask you for a board of directors. The reason you have the board of director for so many issues. One of this, uh, they might serve as somebody who reviewing your operating and capital budget, might help you in developing long-term strategies plan for the growth and expansion 
could, they could support you day-to-day -day activities, revolving, uh, resolving any conflict among the owners. They might help you in ensuring the proper use of the assets and developing a network of information sources. So these partners could be board of directors, also part of your board of directors. Now, you're always going to have uh, the board of advisories, so we will be looking over that because this is something you should not be worried about it. By now, um, uh, we should be able to understand when we establish the business plan, when we are getting our loan, we have an idea or we're already running an idea, we should always plan for the future. What if this grows? What kind of culture I'm putting in? And all these issues. Thank you.